All sports, only sports, all in FM. You've got the ticket. 93.7 KNTK, live, local, right here in Lincoln, online at theticketfm.com. We were gone for a couple days, really two and a half days, if we leave the show on Friday to 3 o'clock. And what do you know? A lot of things happen in recruiting as we get closer to the February 6th deadline. And uh, yesterday, an active day for the most part, a good day if you're a Husker football fan and recruit, Nick. And uh, we've got a new commit. We've also got a possible recommit. Well, we got to recommit. Uh, Josh Harvey, Big Red Report Magazine, BigRedReport.com, FoxSports.com, College Football. Nice enough to join us in our studio. We'll start with the commit, the first commit, a guy who didn't recommit, but it's just a commit. Uh, Matt Finnan, offensive tackle. Um this is a big pickup, and this is what we want to start with. Why is that? Start. Go ahead. I think Matt Finnan is a is a big commitment just because of the fact that he's the type of guy that could come in right away and challenge a Brett Qualley. He could challenge a, a Jeremiah Searles for one of those tackle spots. And and while I don't think he'll necessarily be, necessarily be a starter day one, I think by say midway through the year he's going to be a starter. And so and, and Tom and me talked a little bit about it off air. He's also a guy who's got 3 years to play probably. Right now for sure too. He's probably going to uh, petition for that 6 year of eligibility because he's had some family issues at home. His dad has some health problems. He'll he'll likely get it. And so that means you got a JUCO product in here for three years. That's always a good thing. Would they have taken this guy even if Dan Samuelson hadn't yes. changed his yep. mind? They they were they were chasing after a JUCO offensive lineman way before Dan Samuelson committed or decommitted. So they would have taken this guy no matter what. He's one of those guys that I think he was talented enough that no matter where you were at in the process, you were going to find room for him. Who else was after him? We know Oklahoma had offered him. Who else? Well, there's a couple different schools. Florida State was in the mix with him. Also, Kansas, Maryland, Oklahoma. He was getting a lot of interest late in the game. He was one of those JUCO products that I think it took a while to find him, but once coaches did, it seemed like everybody was very interested in him. Well, he's a big guy, 6'8", 330 pounds. Uh, the other guy that was in town, well, he actually hasn't been in town for a long time. In fact, he was the very first commit of the class. Then he decommitted. I think he was the first decommit, first commit. First decommit. Now he's back in the class, and that's Dixon. Tell us about Travell Dixon. Yeah, Travell Dixon is a straight athlete from Louisiana. He had offers from Arizona State, TCU, Texas Tech, Texas A&M at one point. And I think what happened with Dixon is he got really scared when Corey Raymond left for LSU. And then he started to build that relationship with Terry Joseph, and he found Terry Joseph to be you know, the guy that he felt like he could relate to the best. And I think if Terry Joseph would have been hired day one, you know, the same time they announced Corey Raymond's leaving, they announced Joseph was hired, Dixon might not have decommitted. And it was a situation where he decommitted, but he was always really high on Nebraska throughout the process. And so it wasn't that surprising to hear yesterday that he had, you know, repledged. The thing is, Terry Joseph may not be his position coach. He, he's been recruited as an athlete, right? Yeah. He could play anywhere. Strictly as an athlete. I like him best in the secondary. I, I think so does Fox Sports next. Uh, you know, there's rumors that he could play wide receiver. I think that's what makes this kid, you know, somewhat versatile and, and somewhat of a, a, a pretty good pickup just because of the fact that you can wait until August or September next year and find a position for him depending on your need. Okay, two other guys, Josh uh, Harvey of Big Red Report at BigRedReport.com is our guest in studio. Two other guys visited, Chongo Condolo and Dwayne Johnson, both big offensive linemen. How did their visits go? Yeah, I talked to Dwayne Johnson last night, and he really enjoyed his time. He he seemed to be always favoring Nebraska since he picked up the offer. He He's a decommitment from Purdue. Uh, did that about a month ago, and it was a situation where the Purdue coaching staff changed, and they, the new coaching staff really never reached out to him. He's a, only a two-star guy on our network, and so I think a lot of people will go, whoa, you know, they're on their plan D, plan E options. But he's a guy that has an offer from Oklahoma, has an offer from Kansas State. He he has some impressive offers. He has an offer from Arkansas. And I think when you look at those other schools and, and they've put a scholarship on the table as well, you go, okay, well, there must be something there. I think he'll be reevaluated. I think he'll be a three-star on our network down the road. And I, I think he's going to commit to Nebraska this week. He has an in-home with, with the coaching staff on Wednesday. He told me last night he's not for sure if he's going to visit Oklahoma anymore which he was supposed to this next weekend. So I think by the end of the week, he'll be in. 
What about Candolo? Are they not going to offer him now, now that they have a Juco? I, I, I think it's a, a situation where it's a numbers game. I think they would still, depending on where some things fall, I think they would still take him. He's a Juco offensive lineman. He's a guy that can come in and fill a void just like Finnan did. So I, I think at the end of the day, they would probably still take him. Uh, but, you know, we haven't heard exactly how that's, you know, shaping out and how that's playing out. He's Josh Harvey in studio. It's kind of a five-star reunion yeah, of sorts. it's been a while. Big Red Report magazine, BigRedReport.com, John Gaskins, Tom Stevens, here on 93.7 The Ticket in Lincoln and TheTicketFM.com. The other big news on Sunday is Dominic Walker, wide receiver out of Orlando, three-star guy. He took a visit to Auburn and liked what he saw, according to the sources there. Uh, so there's a little bit of worry of if he's going to decommit to Nebraska. What 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 is your sense? My sense is that he's going to stay in Nebraska, and this could definitely backfire in my face in a couple weeks or whatnot. But here's the the situation with him. Before this trip, he downplayed it to everybody. Oh, I'm just going for some fun. I'm going with my teammate. And then coming out of Auburn, it sounded like he maybe had a little bit better of a time than he thought he was going to, and maybe they showed him some things that he's interested in. I know he's told some sources and some reporters, you know, hey, there's a 75% chance that I'm going to end up playing with my teammate who did commit to Auburn this week. But he also told other people, like our network, oh, it's a 40 to 50% chance. And so I just feel like he's kind of all over the place right now. I don't want to say he's out there seeking attention, but I think it's a situation where, at the end of the day, he's he's going to stick with it. You rarely see wide receivers seeking attention. No, it seems to be one of those positions well, where they're just so introverted. Well, how right? And but eighteen to twenty-two year olds in general. Well, then we're talking about eighteen year olds in this case, seventeen right. and eighteen year olds. I mean, how often do you ever get the sense when you're talking to a kid that oh, he this is in the bud. This is definitive. He's going to Nebraska, and within that percentage. How many of the guys who sound sure of themselves end up changing yeah. their mind anyway? Well, I, I lean to Marcus McWilson there. I mean, I talked to Marcus. I spent a whole day with him when uh, when we the uh, Nebraska played Ohio State. I went out to Cardinal Mooney a day before. Spent a whole day with him and Courtney Love, and you know, I would have never thought that he would be you know thinking about taking visits and and whatnot. And so, I think you're right, John. I think a lot of the times. You know, you never can get a true sense of a kid. And even the times when you do really feel like you have a sense for it, you know, it backfires just because recruiting is always changing. Coaches are always coming in. And it's one of those things until you really have them, you know, sign the line on National Signing Day, it doesn't mean much. Josh Harvey of Big Red Report and BigRedReport.com. You mentioned Marcus McWilson. It seems that he's going to take his visit maybe this weekend to Kentucky. And it's because of the relationship that he had built with Vince Morrow when he was at Nebraska, right? Yeah, and that relationship actually goes back farther than just then. His family and Coach Morrow are, uh, have known each other for some, quite some time. And so I think that's part of the situation. I think, too, here the situation with Marcus is he committed in Nebraska pretty early. He was the second commitment in the class. I think it was in February. It was a couple weeks after signing day. And it's a situation where... You know, maybe he's getting a little cold feet. Maybe he's wanting to see what else is out there just because he didn't visit anybody else during the process. I mean, it was always Nebraska. And so I, I think I think at the end of the day, once again, just like Walker, I think at the end of the day, Marcus McWilson does stick with his commitment to Nebraska. But we'll find out a lot more here in the next couple of days. Uh, how do you have him graded at the safety position? He would be a safety at Nebraska. Yep. Nebraska may be offering Drake Martinez Taylor's brother at the safety position. They have a few other guys. Is he their top safety prospect? No, I would prospect. say DJ Singleton is their top guy. You know, they get him in at signing day. He was a commitment to Wisconsin last year. Uh, didn't make it. Kind of went the Braylon Hurd route academic wise, and then commits to Nebraska a couple, you know, couple uh, weeks ago. Singleton is actually uh, was a four star guy. We had him higher rated than Marcus McWilson. So Singleton would be my top prospect, but Marcus Wil McWilson is right behind him. He's a four-star. We have him as the number 16 safety in the country. And you also got to remember Nathan Jerry at the position, who right. could end up being linebacker down the road, depending on you know weight and size. And so, but Marcus McWilson, that would definitely be a blow to their to their class, not just because of how good of a you know player he is, but also because of the Cardinal Mooney, the Ohio connections. You're hearing stories that this is, uh, I know, on your website. And, you know, it, a lot of it's hyperbole, but Nebraska is ranked, according to Scout, 12th in the country. Rivals, I believe, has them at 14th now. And you're hearing, 
hey, this is the best Bo Pelini class by far. How would you rank it among Bo Pelini classes? Well, I think it's a little tough for me because I haven't been here for all of Bo's classes, but just kind of going back and looking at the commitment list and l- looking at the players they have on the roster right now, I think right now, overall, it's the it's the best class. I don't know if necessarily you go, well, these top three players in this class are the best three players he's ever recruited. But I think from top to bottom, they're getting a lot of talent here and a lot of guys who project to, to play at the next level maybe early on and, and, and contribute in big ways. Right now, they have three two-star commitments. Everybody else is a three- or four-star. And two of those two-star commitments are going to be upgraded to high three-stars here on, on, on Scout and Fox in the next couple of weeks. The other two-star guy is the second best long snapper in the country, which obviously fills a, a, a role for Nebraska because of P.J. Mangieri graduating this year. Uh, Gabriel Miller will be a, a four-year long snapper. So when you go from top to bottom, that's you know you got a class full of four stars and full of three stars, and and it's not just the the ranking that you mentioned that's impressive. When you take it by the average level of recruit, there are anywhere from anywhere from ten to twenty as well. And so uh, this class is definitely shaping out to be one of the best ever for Bo Pelini. It'll be interesting to see how the next you know couple weeks go because they still have some spots left to fill. Yeah. How many? Well, I think they can get to 28, mm-hmm. uh, technically. Uh, they have 23 guys right now, so I'm going to say 26, 27. I don't think they're going to go out to 28 and just take guys to take guys. I think any one they bring in, they're going to really feel like he can contribute. Yeah, and you know, I look at the scout.com rankings right now, and of course, Josh Harvey of BigRedReport.com uh, is the scout affiliate here in Nebraska. Michigan and Ohio State, two Big Ten schools, one and two right now in the country, even though neither team has the most five stars and neither team has the most four stars, uh, they're still on top. What is so darn strong about those classes? Well, I think just like someone like Nebraska, you know, they go top from bo- top to bottom and it's just talent the whole way through. You, you look at their commitment list and there's not really any guys that you have scratching your head. And I think Michigan has 26 commitments right now. I think they're pretty much done. Ohio State's got 22 or 23, and I think they can bring on one more if I if I remember correctly. Both of those guys or both of those schools, they just they had good years as far as talent up and down. They didn't necessarily get the top guy at each position, but it was always it seemed like a guy in the top ten. Is it just because of coaches? I mean, is this a, is this mainly what you just? It's Brady Hoke and Urban Meyer. Well, Ohio State. It's always, always good. yeah. It's always they're they always, always have a top ten recruiting class, right. and and they own Ohio, and they should because Ohio is one of the best states. But Urban Meyer comes in, they start recruiting Florida a little bit. Dominic Walker and and James, or I should say James Clark, a Nebraska target, is getting interest from them now. So he he's got the Florida ties and the Ohio ties. He he doesn't need anything else. And Michigan, uh, as far as Michigan, Brady Hoke has really come in there. He's kind of energized it. And when you talk to recruits after they visit Michigan. They just really like Brady Hoke, and they get a sense that that program is kind of on the cusp of changing things and becoming a national title contender year in and year out, and that's why you're seeing them have a lot of success this year. So one and two, Nebraska, you would have Nebraska as the third best class of the Big Ten right now? Yes, right now they're the third best class. It's actually funny, if you would break them down according to uh, where they would be at in the Big 12, they'd be the number one class in the Big 12. Uh, But yeah, I think they'll stick at number three. There's no way they're going to catch Ohio State or Michigan and it'll be interesting to see where they finish up. I, I think they can I think they could get into the top I think they'll stay in the top fifteen before it's all said and done. Uh Nebraska has no five star commits so far in this class. I guess the best out there is Priest Willis, uh the D B I was gonna say so far you're Yeah so you're, and, and so would you're he, hoping would he be their best chance to get a five star Yeah he'd be their best chance, but I don't I don't think it's gonna happen. I think Priest is I think he's what is going to go to UCLA. Otherwise, I think he's going to stay on the West Coast. I didn't get good vibes when I talked to him out in Orlando at the Under Armour game. I, I would really put those chances at say less than ten percent. Who who do they need to close out this class? Go to a position or a guy out there that you'd say that Nebraska is really targeting, really wants to get to close out this class. Well, I think I think you look at Dwayne Johnson. I, I still think that you know you could use another offensive lineman after. Samuelson decommitted and after you know not getting a true offensive tackle last year I think he's a guy that could come in and even though he's a two-star guy I think he's a guy that you could you know count on down the road he's not a guy who can play right away but you need a couple young offensive linemen to be able to play when some of these guys graduate and I think 
you know, I look at the list and I'm I'm pretty impressed with him. Uh, one final national note, because a lot of people who are a little cynical about Nebraska's recruiting under Bo Pelini the last few years, it's just not enough elite, not enough high four star and five star guys. And you look at USC, they've got six five stars right now, the most of any team in the country. We've seen, I, I went back to 2009 when Pete Carroll was still there and recruiting in 2010, Lane Kiffin's first recruiting year. They were a top 10 team in recruiting. Um, they get a lot of talent and we we just saw them lose six games. Has it been depth or does, or is, you know, is Lane Kiffin is one year at Tennessee recruiting 2009. They were number eight in the country and you know, they went seven and six that year. Not a direct reflection of your recruiting class, yeah. obviously. Does it appear that Lane Kiffin just, uh, he can't coach. Is that, is that, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I look at it I'm and saying. go, yeah, I look at it and say they're pulling in the talented players or at least the projected talented players. So where does it fall? And and just because a guy can get in four and far, four and five star guys doesn't mean he's going to be able to coach them. And vice versa, you look at guys like I, I would throw Bo Pelini in this list. You you throw guys maybe like Chris Peterson and Gary Patterson, where they can take high two star, three star talents and you know turn them into NFL players and have top twenty five squads, top fifteen squads in the nation. And so I look at that and say Lane Kiffin is pulling in the talent every year. Where's the problem? Well, obviously, it's coming on the coaching end of Are things. you one of those guys that says Nebraska needs a full-time recruiting coordinator, a guy no. that does not coach a position that is out there, just he spends all of his time on recruiting? No, because I think the recruiting office at Nebraska has a pretty good support team as far as helping them identify players, making sure the coaches you know stay on top of things, and making sure the coaches are, are keeping contact with all these things. So, no, I, I, I don't think that would it help. You know, maybe, but I, I don't think it's a necessity. Josh Harvey, a big red report. And finally, um, well, I guess how many how many schools do that? Do you know of, of very many schools who do a full time recruiting coordinator that yeah, doesn't coach? There are schools out there as far as to a percentage or a list. I I couldn't tell you that okay. off the top of my head. And then when guys are being recruited, how uh, each kid's uh, there's so many out there. There's twenty five for most. You know, an average of twenty five per school, and there's one hundred twenty schools, but. How important at a high level like Nebraska, the Big Ten, the BCS schools, two big time recruits is getting me into the NFL and having me ready for the NFL. You can flick on the TV and see Levante David and Alfonso Dennard right now, pretty you know playing a lot and playing pretty well. Yeah, I don't think it's quite as big as is is in college basketball, but I think I think a majority of football players they have that dream of going on to the next level. I think everybody in every possession or in every you know, profession has that dream, and these guys are no different. I think I don't know if it's always necessarily the most important, but I think for for a lot of guys, it, it ranks up there. And I think it, it happens on the JUCO level more when when you get a JUCO recruit. That's a little bit more on their mind than maybe an eighteen year old kid. Josh, I always appreciate you coming by, being on, and coming by. Not and, a problem, uh, guys. We'll, uh, everybody can keep checking BigRedReport.com throughout the day, every day, because things change real fast all the time. They do.